Welcome back to the channel for practice problems for actuarial exams. Here is some information about um, study resources I provide for exam P. Uh, today's problem is for exam P. And information about me, if you want to find out who I am, go to smarturl.it forward slash Jedi. If you would like to find out about the actuarial program at Illinois State University, go to smarturl.it forward slash actuary. And if you'd like to make a tax-deductible donation to the actuarial program at Illinois State University, go to smarturl.it forward slash help ISU actuary. Here is our problem for today. It's a sample problem for exam P posted by the Society of Actuaries, um, problem number 171. The return on two investments, X and Y, follows the joint probability density function uh, which is one half for x and y such that absolute value of x plus absolute value of y is a sum of the two is greater than zero and less than one. So we'll take a look at this uh, quickly and note that the condition um, of that um, absolute value of x plus absolute value of y is greater than zero for any other number but zero and zero, the two values of x and y, is spurious because um, whatever they are, if they're not both zero, uh, then this uh, is uh, positive, abs absolute value of x plus absolute value of y. And with the exception of that one point, x equal to zero, one, y equal to zero, and this is true uh, for any positive, uh, for any x and y, uh, not just positive, uh, because of, of course absolute value of x is positive when x is positive or negative, and the same for y. And then the second condition is absolute value of x plus absolute value of y is less than 1. And that's a, that's a real condition. We have to figure out where that happens. And 0 otherwise. And we're supposed to calculate the variance of x. Okay. So one thing that we also note immediately is that um, the joint density is constant. So that the distribution of the random vector x, y is uniform on the region where absolute value of x plus absolute value of y is less than 1. And the key question is, what is that region? So it's important to remember the absolute value of x is defined as x for x greater than or equal to 0 and minus x for x greater than 0, and the same for absolute value of y. So this condition is translated into four different conditions for um, different ranges of x and y, when both x and y are positive or well, non-negative, this is the same as x plus y is less than 1, which is y less than 1 minus x. So y is in the first quadrant, y is less than uh, this line <coughs> determined by the condition y equals 1 minus x. So y is below that. For x less than 0, y greater than or equal to 0, y is below the line given by the condition y equals 1 plus x. For x positive or non-negative and y less than 0, um, y is greater than x minus 1. So that means that y is above the line determined by the condition y equals x minus 1. And for x and y less than 0, y is greater than minus x plus 1. Okay, so it's four different conditions in four different quadrants. And that means if you carefully pay attention to the conditions in four different quadrants, then the region where x, uh, absolute value of x plus absolute value of y is less than 1 is the darkened area in the figure below. Now, technically the density is not defined as that constant one-half um, where absolute value of x plus absolute value of y equals zero, which is only at the point at zero, zero, so in the middle of this of this figure that you see, darkened figure that you see here. But one value of one, at one point of the density for a continuous distribution doesn't matter for any calculations. So we basically comfortable by saying that the density is constant on this figure, and on this region marked here, uh, with darkened. And what is that region? Well, that region is a square. 
it's tilted, but it's a square. And what is the length of a side of the square? Well, if you just take the triangle in the first quadrant, that triangle has one side of 1, another side of 1, and it's a right triangle, so the third, uh, the third side um, has to be of length square root of 1 squared plus 1 squared by the Pythagorean theorem. So the third side, which is the side of the big darkened square, is square root of 2. So it's a square whose side has a length of square root of 2. So its area is 2, and the density is constant on this area, so the density is 1 half. Everything makes sense here. And the marginal density of x is the constant joint density of 1 half times the length of the segment from the uh, bottom to the top of the triangle for a given value of x. For positive x, this bottom is at x minus 1 and the top is at 1 minus x, and the length is 1 minus x minus this x minus 1 thing, so it's 2 minus 2x. Two Multiplying by 1 half gives the density of x for x positive as 1 minus x. Note that the distribution of x is symmetric about the origin because the distribution of xy is symmetric with respect to the y-axis. Um, by symmetry, for uh, negative x, the density of x is equal to 1 minus, I'm sorry, 1 minus, minus x, or 1 plus x. Uh, also, by symmetry, the mean of x is 0. Well, if mean is 0, then the variance is equal to the second moment of x. So it's calculated as e of x squared. And between negative 1 and 0, that's um, the e of x squared is calculated as the integral uh, from minus 1 to 0 of x squared times 1 plus x dx, because the density is 1 plus x there. And then from 0 to 1, it's x squared times 1 minus x, because the density is 1 minus x there. And we just calculate this integral now. Uh, so the first one is really x squared plus x cubed and the integral of that is one-third x cubed plus one-fourth x to the fourth, evaluated now from negative one to zero. And the second one is x squared minus x cubed. The integral of that is one-third x cubed minus one-fourth x to the fourth, evaluated from zero to one. So we evaluate those things, and these two parts turn out to be equal to both one-third minus one-fourth which is 1 12th, and 2 times 1 12th is 1 6th, and that's the answer, answer A. Please remember this is copyrighted material, and of course since the problem comes from the Society of Actuaries, it belongs to the Society of Actuaries and it's reproduced with permission.